Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, what? Okay, we got a mail here. Good sales and perspective. It says, uh, "Howdy, Perch. Um, is there a baseline for what American comic sale comic books is considered good sales? Sure, it's great if every issue sold hundred thousand units every month, but outside of a number one, that won't happen in the current climate. Look at the old Comic Con numbers. Around ten k units seem to be the break even point." The IDW Sonic the Hedgehog series falls into this category and is IDW's second best-selling book. In the hemisphere, around 20k looks like the sweet spot. Before issue 300, Spawn uh, hovered above this. Post 300 spiked upward, but settled around 30,000 units after the quote-unquote event boost. After that uh, is the DC and Marvel books, which fluctuate from 30 to 100,000 in a given week, with the higher end just being Batman, X-Men, Spider-Man books. X-Men hasn't been in that territory for a while, actually. Um, next, I'd like to direct you to Manga, which does per publish its uh, quarterly circulation numbers. Emphasis on circulation, i.e. books that are either sold to customers or sitting on store shelves. At the top of the mountain is Weekly Shonen Jump, which at 1.2 million units in a three-month period. Assuming everything is equal, divide that by three, and you get 400,000 units per month. We're not done yet. Shonen Jump generally has 10 different stories per unit, so divided those 10 stories, you get 40,000 units per story per month. That bit of the math, I'm, I'm with you, but that bit of the math is inaccurate because they're encapsulated one issue. You can't just divide them up and then count them all equally. Definitely some stories in Shonen Jump are doing better than others, and uh, there's anchor stories and then stories that you're trying to bring up. I mean, you know, one piece is going to be the draw to get a lot of stuff uh, pulled up. Uh, anyway, um, there's more to this, but for simplicity's sake, we'll leave it right there. However, when we move down to the second place log in circulation, Weekly Shonen Magazine, it's 370,000 units quarterly. That's 123,000 units per month. Not sure how many stores have that per week, uh, but at this point, it's significantly less than Jump, which makes things based on uh, kind of where, where it's at. Everything else. Lastly are the Tonkabon sales. Those are covered by um, Oricon recently, did the top 10 series for the year. Note that these books sold to customers and don't count product sitting on the shelf. King of the Hill is Blue Lock with 10.5 million units. Bottom of the Hill is Kingdom with 3.5 million units. 3.2 million units, sorry. I know some people still think of Demon Slayer with its 80 million units plus sold, but that was an anomaly. This is what you'd normally expect. And that's very true, by the way. One Piece, Demon Slayer, uh, Kaijin, uh, Attack on Titan to some extent, Chainsaw Man, uh, Academia, you know, all those uh, series. Uh, they do, you know, they're, those are the breakout hits, for sure. Anyway, uh, there's more uh, that I could add, but I think this email's gone too long. What I'd like to ask is, do you think there are good sales for an ongoing series minus event books, like a shiny new number one? Do I have the low-tier, uh, indie license C-list characters, mid-tier, image B-list characters, and top-tier, big two A-list characters? What do you think are reasonable sales expectations? Trade paperback, same question. Thanks for your time. All right, thank you for the mail. So. In the current climate, uh, 75,000 uh, copies of a monthly comic is considered top tier doing well. 75,000. Um, 40,000 is considered kind of upper mid, uh, with most of that settling in at the 25 to 30 range for mid. And then uh, 5,000 is probably low of the numbers you want to hit. But when I say numbers you want to hit, that doesn't necessarily mean break even because Unfortunately, with a lot of these companies, there's a lot of different ways they do the math on what break even even means. So it's not simple to just say, you know, break even is 10,000. You know, 10,000 for Marvel may be different than 10,000 for IDW, for example. But oftentimes it's not intuitive in that break even for Marvel is usually lower than break even for an indie company um, in a lot of cases, just based on how they're producing and what they're publishing and kind of the raw numbers. Um, so it's, it's, it's a little bit tricky there. But generally, 75 high, uh, 40 kind of mid, upper mid, 25, 30 mid, five, you know, maybe stretching into 10 for, for low, but generally five. And that's where the industry is currently at. And that's, the mar that's what the market is telling you that it could do and what it could sustain. Uh, those aren't good numbers, to be clear. It's not, those aren't numbers that can actually boost up an entire industry. The other very important part of the question is, well, you know, what is the breakdown of upper mid? Is it, you know, a third, a third, a third? No. Um, if you're talking about 600 odd comics a month, you're talking about 5% of 
of those books are in the upper level. Um, you're talking about probably 10% are in upper mid, 25% are in mid, and the rest are all low, if you're talking about the entire comics. If you're talking about Marvel, certainly it skews higher, you know, because of who they are and kind of the reputation. They do, they do better. Uh, but the breakdown still falls kind of the same general category for them. You have a very small amount on the top tier. You'll have Spider-Man there. You have the Avengers and uh, maybe the core X-Men book breaking in at uh, mid, you know, upper mid. You have the vast majority of the titles, and this would be kind of your Daredevils, your um, other X-Books, um, you know, those kinds of things. Venom that's in, you know, mid and then you have your low, which would be your, you know, I, I, whatever kind of weird experiment they're doing on any given day. It's like, you know, the, the Inhumans title. Or I was, again, I was going through uh, comic boxes trying to get stuff organized uh, recently. And uh, that I, I, I would have came across Royals. Do you remember that book? That was an Inhumans book. Remember when they had the Inhumans book, like the Uncanny Inhumans? And you had Royals and you had like one or two more. Like you had, you had a time where they were producing three to four inhuman books a month. It's just wild to think about. But anyway, you got, you got that, you know, or your Squirrel Girl or your, you know, Uncancelable Wasp or your, you know, uh, Kate Bishop Hawkeye series or whatever it happens to be. And that, that hovers in for their low. Um, what, what has to happen if you're talking about U.S. comics is that the overall market sizing has to get bigger because these numbers are acclimated and pressure tested to where the market's currently at, um, which is at a, this lower state. And until you can actually, you know, boost that up a little bit and get the distribution, you know, I mean, you basically get more people buying comics. The fallacy, and this is a business fact, is that you could say, well, you know, 5% of the titles are selling at the upper range. You know, for Marvel, you've got, you know, two to three books selling in that, you know, 75,000 range. So that's even, that's lower than 5% actually for them. And all we need to do is get, you know, 20 books into that range. Well, the problem is, and that's, that's kind of the business uh, joke that a lot of people play is um, what we're seeing from the market is that the overall market cap and market size suggests that 5% at the upper level is probably the most the industry can sustain right now. It, it would be wonderful if that could grow to 10 to 15 percent, but that's going to require additional distribution. It's going to require comics getting more places. It's going to require a price drop. It's going to require top tier talent doing the interiors of the books and not just the covers. It's going to require some pretty sizable things happening in order to actively grow the market. You can't take the current market and just magically have the top tier gain 10 percent. That's not that's not going to happen. Uh, particularly when you know. I'm I, in all everything I'm saying. I'm excluding what you said: the event books, the number ones, the variant cover schemes, all the rest. Because you will see press releases say, you know, Black Panther number one sold two hundred fifty thousand copies. Yeah, um, it did because it's a number one issue, because there are a lot of variant covers, and because the uh, Marvel department went out and actively hustled and got you know some of the bigger chains like Midtown to you know, pre-order 20,000 exclusive covers or something. That's how that happens. That is wholly unnatural. It does nothing to increase the overall cap. And when you see Black Panther number two come out, it promptly falls back into the 50,000, 40,000 range. And, you know, and then cue up the, well, comic readers are racist and or Disney is apparently supporting Israel, so we're going to pirate and protest or whatever, whatever you got going on. But the reality in all this is the talent, the creative talent, mainly the artist, is not at the Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, you know, level. You have a couple of really killer, you know, artists out there. But I mean, you, you take Sean Murphy. Sean Murphy is a good artist. He's one that uh, sells books. He's one that has a big name for himself. And uh, what is Sean Murphy doing? Sean Murphy is doing a Zorro book uh, on his own. Before that, he was doing White Knight, which was the kind of Elseworlds Batman book. You know, in reality, you need to take Sean Murphy or Jim Chung or, you know, some of these, uh, Olivia Capil, um, and you need to take these guys and you need to put them on Avengers, Batman, Spider-Man. You got to put them on the big books in order to stabilize that top base and grow it. 
But a lot of the top tier artists are either doing covers or in Sean's case, they're off doing their own books on the side. And that's good for Sean. You know, he's going to make more money that way and all the rest. But that's bad for the industry. It's bad for comics because you don't have the top tier talent there really doing this, really pushing it. And so until you fix that problem, you're pretty stuck. Um, you know, on top of that, it's all things I mentioned, you know, price, storyline, uh, you know, you got to get into some other places. I mean, it, this is a bit of a chicken, the egg problem. If you had comics could be distributed more places, then arguably do you have more cash? And if you had more cash, you could pay, you know, the higher dollar and you get people like Alex Ross, you know, to do interiors again. And the overall industry would care more. Uh, but you know, you got to pull all those things together anyway. Uh, thanks for your question. Any other thoughts on numbers? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for listening.